Over 2,200 years ago, before satellites orbited the Earth and before telescopes peered into the stars, there was a man whose intellect reached beyond what anyone could fathom for his time. In Alexandria, Egypt, a city renowned for its thriving culture and knowledge, an African mathematician, geographer, and philosopher named Eratosthenes would go on to do something extraordinary. Against the backdrop of ancient scrolls, crude measuring tools, and a world still teeming with mystery, Eratosthenes dared to unravel one of the greatest unknowns of his era, the size of the Earth. One day, Eratosthenes stumbled upon an intriguing observation. He read in ancient texts that on the summer solstice in the Egyptian city of Siene, modern-day Aswan, the sun shone directly overhead at noon. That meant objects cast no shadows and the sun's rays were perfectly vertical. Fascinating, right? But here's where his genius truly began to shine. Eratosthenes knew that in Alexandria, located north of Syene, shadows were cast on the very same day and time. The sun wasn't directly overhead, but appeared at an angle. Most would overlook this fact, or deem it irrelevant. Eratosthenes saw it as an opportunity to uncover something enormous. What if he could use these shadows to measure the curvature of the Earth? To do this, he had to rely on two crucial ideas. The first was simple yet profound, the concept of a spherical Earth. While many ancient scholars debated this, Eratosthenes firmly believed in it. His second tool was the mathematics of geometry specifically the way angles and distances relate within a circle. Imagine Eratosthenes standing in Alexandria at noon on the summer solstice, holding a stick straight into the ground, a humble gnomon, if you will. The sun's rays hit the stick at an angle and cast a shadow. He measured this angle, approximately seven degrees, one-fiftieth of a circle. Eureka! Armed with this small detail, Eratosthenes realized he had found the key to calculating the Earth's circumference. Here's how. If the distance from Siene to Alexandria was a fraction of the Earth's full circumference, that fraction would be dictated by the seven-degree angle he measured. Using ancient records, he estimated that the distance between Siene and Alexandria was about 5,000 stadia a unit of measurement used in the ancient world. This, he reasoned, corresponded to one-fiftieth of the Earth's circumference. Multiply 5,000 by 50, and you get 250,000 stadia. It was a stunning revelation, but just how close was he? By modern calculations, a stadion is roughly equivalent to between 157 and 160 meters. That means Eratosthenes' calculation translates to somewhere between 39,250 and 40,000 kilometers. Modern science measures the actual size at about 40,075 kilometers. Think about that. A 2,200-year-old calculation using sticks, shadows, and raw intellect was dangerously close to perfection. Perhaps even more astonishing is how Eratosthenes accomplished this without the tools we have today. No lasers, no GPS, not even the ability to physically travel from Sien to Alexandria himself. What he had was a mind uniquely attuned to logic, patterns, and the interconnectedness of the world. From the ancient scrolls in the Great Library of Alexandria, to the scorching sands of the Egyptian desert, Eratosthenes turned Earth into a geometry problem and solved it. His findings were not confined to theory. They had very real implications for cartography, navigation, and the way humanity understood its place within the grand scale of the universe. Yet history doesn't always treat geniuses with the recognition they deserve. While names like Copernicus and Galileo are etched into our collective consciousness, Eratosthenes often stands in the shadows. What's perhaps most inspiring about Eratosthenes is the sheer audacity of his curiosity. 
His calculations proved what many had only theorized, that the Earth was large, spherical, and measurable. He gave humanity a sense of scale in an era brimming with uncertainty. Today, satellites orbiting thousands of kilometers above the Earth provide insights, all with pinpoint accuracy. But the foundation for this technology come from Eratosthenes and others like him. So, today, satellites orbiting thousands of kilometers above the Earth provide insights, all with pinpoint accuracy. But the foundation for this technology come from Eratosthenes and others like him. So, next time you glance at a globe, think of Eratosthenes, the African scholar who measured the Earth with nothing but his mind and a shadow. It's moments like these that remind us of humanity's boundless capacity for ingenuity and wonder. Eratosthenes didn't just measure the Earth, he measured the limits of human possibility, and in doing so, shattered them entirely. Like, share, and subscribe for more truth about Africa's lost history and powerful legacy.